When performing troubleshooting on the Apollo CAN system, it is important to remember that the master CM40 ECU needs to be communicating before the slave ECUs can have any troubleshooting performed. There will be two different scenarios based on tow between tank configuration and the tow behind as the CM40 is placed at different breakouts depending on the scenario. Ensure you are viewing the correct presentation. We are going to follow the CAN signal through the Apollo system, the way it's used on the Virgo tank. We're going to start at the front at the monitor plug. The monitor plug is here and is also U1 on the drawing. There's two sets of yellow and green lines coming out. We're going to be focusing on CAN 1. The other set is CAN 2. It goes out through the harness, turns around and comes back, and it's terminated here at CAN 2. So we only need to focus on the 1. So if we go over here, we can follow easier. So pins 8 and 9 are CAN high and CAN low. We're going to follow those out through the monitor harness. So number 9. CAN low goes to ISO loop A in pin 4, which is plug U6, and also to pin 4 for ISO loop B, which is plug U9 of the drawing. The CAN high, pin 8, goes out to pin 2 on ISO loop A, and also to pin 2 on ISO loop B. From the monitor harness, we will be connecting to the in installed tractor harness that comes with the system. For the loop A connection, there can be a Y harness inserted between the tractor connection, which is this plug G for loop A connection, and also the loop A connection on the monitor harness. That Y harness allows us to be able to tee in the cabin switch box for in-cab use. If the in-cab switch box is not desired, the two plugs simply get plugged together. Pin 2 on the loop A connection is going to go from there to the Powell terminator to pin E at the Powell terminator. Pin 4 at loop A connection is going to go to pin F on the Powell terminator and that will terminate the loop A at the front of the system. The loop B connection, coming from the monitor harness to the tractor harness, is going to plug into the H plug. So H2 is going to follow through, and it's going to go to L8, which is our ISO connection at the rear of the tractor. Pin 4 on plug H is going to go to pin L9 on the standalone ISO connection plug at the rear of the tractor. Continuing on from the tractor, we go to the front implement harness. So from our standalone ISO plug at the back of the tractor, we're going to connect to our ISO plug at the front of our implement harness. So still in pin eight with the can high coming off that harness, follow that through to the ECU breakout harness or the ECU breakout at the center of the drill it's going to wind up in pin E3. The can low coming out on pin 9, so B9 here, it's going to follow through, can low, and it's going to take us to pin E4 at our ECU breakout harness. Once the can signal has reached the ECU breakout at the front implement harness, there is either going to be, a, if there's no ECUs on the drill, there's going to be a plug, a 3151-90, that will loop the CAN signal through from pins E3 and E4 down to E15-17. Or if there is ECUs, it will have an ECU breakout harness that will be looping these plugs down the same. On a trailing system, we are not looking for ECUs yet at this point the signals carrying on through the harness. So from pin E3, 
we go down and we're going to be going into pin E17. Pin E17 is going to go all the way back to the plug at the rear of the front implement harness to pin D3. Pin E4 came in. It's going to come back out on 15 and it's going to carry through to pin D4 at the rear of the front implement harness as well. From the plug at the rear of the front implement harness, we will be joining to the plug, the ISO plug at the front of the rear implement harness. We're still on pins three for the can high, and it's going to go to the ECU breakout on this harness, which is located at the back of this harness. And on the tank, it'll be located by the ECUs. Pin B4 from the plug at the front of the rear implement harness is going to go through to plug G4 at the ECU breakout plug. From the ECU breakout on the rear harness, we will be attaching an ECU breakout harness. That breakout harness on the tank is going to be a triple harness. These are the part numbers here for the triple harness they sub up. So we're going to be going in with the can high on pin three. So here at A3, and we're going to go through and it's going to splice off. So it's going to splice off and the first place we're going to go is to the switch box break off for this harness. This is where we plug in the tank switch box. And our can high signal is going in on B. Our signal also breaks off from pin A3 to go to each of the communication plugs. So if we follow through here, we'll find that the signal goes to pin 7 on each of the communication plugs. All three of these plugs are identical. So pin 7 is going to be the same on plug E, plug H, and plug K. So all three plugs can be used in any location. Can low signal on four, so pin A4 here, splices off, and it's going to go up to our switch box breakout on the tank. So our can low is pin B4 at our switch box breakout. It also splices off and it goes to each of the communication plugs in pin eight. So you see here, pin eight on plug E, plug H, and plug K. The CAN signal on the ECU breakout harness going to the switch box breakout. So is going in on pins B3 and B4. It's going to make a loop and it's going to come back on pin 7 and 8. So CAN high on pin 8 is going to run all the way back through to where our ECU breakout harness joins into the ECU breakout from our rear implement harness. Pin seven here for our can low is going to run through to pin 15 at our ECU breakout. The can signal on the ECU breakout harness going to the switch box breakout. So is going in on pins B3 and B4. It's going to make a loop and it's going to come back on pin 7 and 8. So can high on pin 8 is going to run all the way back through to where our ECU breakout harness joins into the ECU breakout from our rear implement harness. Pin 7 here for our can low is going to run through to pin 15 at our ECU breakout. From our ECU breakout harness, the signal that was coming back from the CAN switch box breakout, we've got our CAN high G17 at our ECU breakout where the harness plugs in. And it's going to go through to pin E 
for the rear power towel terminator. Our can low on pin 15. It's going to follow through and it's going to go to pin F on that rear power terminator. Back to our ECU breakout harness. So we were going in with our can high and low on pin seven and eight. These three plugs are all identical. The only ECU that is using the, the signal from pin seven and eight is our master ECU. The master ECU on the air seeder tank is always located closest to the tank wall. It'll be at the bottom of the stack. So that communication is done through pin e, E7 and E8, but for the rest of the ECUs to pick up, they're being picked up with the CAN signal after that ECU, and that comes out on pins 9 and 10 from the master ECU, and that's going to allow us to splice in the other ECUs. So if we use E as example, for example, as our master, that signal is going to come out of E9 and 10. It's going to go and splice off, and it gets terminated at the CAN2 terminator cap. But it also splices off, and it's going to go through to our other ECUs on pins 9 and 10, as you can see in this drawing. It also goes back up through the harness to where the ECU breakout begins on pins 5 and 6. And that's how we're going to go back through the harness to the ECUs on the drill. From the ECU breakout plug, coming from the ECU breakout harness and the ECUs, we're going to take that signal back to the ECUs on the drill. So our can high is coming out of pin 6. We're going to follow that pin 6 all the way through to that plug at the front of the rear implement harness. G5 is our can low, and we're going to follow that all the way through back to the front of the rear implement harness on pin 5. From our rear implement harness, we're going to be joining back to our front implement harness to continue the can back to the ECUs. So pin 6 is our can high, is going to follow all the way back through to where our ECU breakout is on this harness, which is located in the center of the drill. As well as our can low from pin 5 is going to go all the way back through to that ECU breakout in pin 5 as well. To connect our ECUs on our drill, and this depends on whether we have a single ECU, a double ECU, or a third ECU, there's three different harnesses. The triple, which we have displayed here, this part number's here. If it's two ECUs, these part numbers. If it's a single ECU, it's these part numbers, and these all sub up to the newest one. If you do not have ECUs, then this is the breakout plug that will be used, which continues the CAN signal. So from the ECU breakout on the front implement harness, we go into the ECU breakout and we follow CAN high, which is going to go through to the CAN2 breakout here. It's also going to go down through to our ECUs so we can learn them in as well. Once the main master is learned in, it's important to remember that it doesn't matter the sequence of any of the others, but none of the others will work unless the master is plugged in. So pin 9 here for the other ECUs on all three plugs, whether it's a single, double, or triple. Our can low, pin 5, is going through. It's going to go to this can 2 again, terminator. And it's going to go down here to the ECU breakouts on pin 10 on all the plugs, depending whether you have single, double, or triple again. 